Today on the John Ankerberg Show, my guest is Ann Graham Watts. She was called the best preacher in the family by her late father, Billy Graham. Ann is an international speaker and a best-selling author. When Ann lost her husband of 49 years, she felt both shock and intense grief. Then just a few years later, her beloved father, Billy Graham, passed away. And then six months after his funeral, Anne was diagnosed with breast cancer. Yet through it all, she relied on the constant companionship of the Holy Spirit to help her. We invite you to join us on this edition of The John Ankerberg Show to hear Anne explain how you can rely on the Holy Spirit to be your constant companion, no matter what you are facing. Welcome to our program. I'm John Ankerberg, and my guest today is Ann Graham Watts, and I'm so glad that you're here, Ann, taking time out of your busy schedule. And we're talking about a topic that I think is of interest to both the non-Christians and the Christians, and that is this. Some of you that are non-Christians and you're thinking about Jesus, you haven't crossed the line yet, but you've heard people say, if you do invite Christ to come into your life, you don't know what that means, and you don't know what it means when Christians say, hey, if you do, he'll change your life. And if you've got problems, if you've got a drinking problem, a drug problem, a, a marriage problem, there's a mess somewhere at work or something, the fact is he can straighten those kinds of messes out in your life. And you say, how can he do that? And so we want to talk about how God does that. And then I want to talk to those of you that are Christians. Maybe you go to a church, Maybe you've gone to church all of your life. And uh, like one lady told me, she said, what I heard at church growing up, she said, I, would li I listened to it for 16 years. When I came home, I looked at my family and I looked at the neighbors that went to that church and none of us did what they <laughs> talked about from the Bible in that church. And she said, therefore I left, okay? And I want to answer the question, to those of you that are Christians, is the Holy Spirit real to you? You say, who is the Holy Spirit? And Anne, that's the question we're talking about today, is how do people learn to know who the Holy Spirit is, why he's important, what he can do in our lives that some people have never been told, starting anywhere that you'd like? Yeah. You know, the Holy Spirit, for many of us raised in the traditional church, he's treated like an optional extra. When I was growing up, he was referred to as the Holy Ghost. And I didn't want to know a ghost, so I just ignored him and um, you know, focused on God the Father, God the Son. But as an adult, you know, as I studied the scriptures, I found he's not a ghost, John. He's not a dove. He's not a flame of fire. He's not a wind. He's not oil. He's not an ecstatic experience. Um, the, the Holy Spirit is a living, invisible person. He has a mind to think and a will to act, uh, emotions to feel. He's referred to as the third person of the Trinity, not because he's the least, which is what I thought. <laughs> and I thought it was, you know, we had the grand glorious God, the Father, the beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit was like a PS. But that's not, not so. He's referred to as the third person of the Trinity because it's God the Father revealed primarily in the Old Testament, God the Son in the Gospels, God the Holy Spirit in Acts and the Epistles. And he's not an optional extra. He is a divine necessity. You and cannot I, function in your Christian life without him. And I love the fact of you talking about him as a person, mm -hmm. a person who loves you, yeah. that when you invite Christ into your life, actually Jesus sends mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and he comes and lives in your life. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says he's another just like me. Mm -hmm. The Greek word at another means he's like the same, except mm -hmm. he doesn't have a physical body. Yeah. Jesus is a God-man in heaven, yeah. and the Holy Spirit is an invisible Godhead who is inside of us. He is the person of the Holy Spirit who can be grieved as well mm -hmm. when we don't know about him, mm -hmm. when we don't obey him, mm -hmm. when we don't recognize what he can do, why Jesus even sent him, mm -hmm. and we miss out on so many things. And this is what I want to talk about today. Maybe you got a verse from Scripture that would outline this for people that Jesus told the disciples on the last night just before he went to the cross. He told them that he was going to send the Holy Spirit. Can you read that verse? Mm -hmm. 
He says in, uh, this is John chapter 16, and just the first few verses, uh, if I can read five through seven, Jesus said, now I'm going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I've said these things, you're filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it's for your good I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. And the counselor, as you already pointed out in John chapter 14, he said he's going to ask the Father to give us another counselor. So Jesus is a counselor, but the word another, as you pointed out, means someone exactly the same as. So the Holy Spirit is exactly the same as Jesus, but without his man's physical body. And so one of my favorite names is one that we um, ended our last program on, that he's Jesus in me. So when I put my faith in Jesus as my Savior, invited him to come into my heart as my Lord, surrendered my life to him, he came into me in the person of the Holy Spirit. And at the time, John, I was seven, eight, nine years of age. I, I asked Jesus to come in my heart. I didn't know about the Holy Spirit, you know, at that point. Jesus understood. So he, he honored my faith and he came into me, even though I was inviting Jesus to come in. He came in in the person of the Holy Spirit. So if there's somebody out there who's ask Jesus to come into their heart and they think, well, then I don't have the Holy Spirit. Yes, you do, because the Holy Spirit is Jesus in you. So um, we can't function without him. And he has many wonderful names. Uh, Jesus in me is sort of implied in John chapter 14 and John chapter 16. But Jesus said in that verse, in verse 7, that it's better for Jesus to go away so that the Holy Spirit can come. So so having the invisible presence of Jesus is better than having his visible presence, and that's an amazing thing. Now, one of the things that just struck me, Anne, is that uh, why has God raised you up to be such a great speaker all over the world, and people love to hear you speak, mm -hmm. all right? When the Apostle Paul, who was Saul at that time, met Jesus, the risen Jesus, on the road to Damascus, he was blinded by it, and the fact is he actually saw Jesus and then was blinded by it. And uh, he saw the resurrected Jesus. And as he was recuperating, God sent a man to him and said, I want you to go and tell this man how great I'm going to use him. But I also, and there's a PS to it, how much he's going to have to suffer for doing this. You have suffered. God's used you in a great way. But in reading your book, I realized how much you have suffered. And I don't think that people realize that the daughter of Billy Graham has suffered things like they have. And one of the things that we're going to talk about is he's the comforter, he's the helper. But the fact is, tell folks out there some of the things that you've uh, gone through in your life where you've needed the Holy Spirit and how he's helped you, he's comforted you. You know, um, it's difficult for me, John, to go over some of those things because God has been so good to me and I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. You know, l life just throws us curveballs, doesn't it? Life is hard. And when you're at my age, you know that. And uh, if somebody's had an easy life all of their lives, then praise God for it. But, but I think we had talked earlier about the fact that I'm married young. Um, had two miscarriages when I desperately wanted to have a baby, and uh, then I won't go into it, but I prayed and fasted one day a week for a year until God whispered in my heart and said he would give me a son. Next month I got pregnant and had a son. He grew up uh, at 28. He was diagnosed with an unusual form of cancer and went through um, surgery, radiation. Um, he also married, and uh, his marriages have uh, ended in divorce, which was not my picture for my son at all. I prayed for him every day of you know, my life before pregnancy, every day of pregnancy, every day of his life, and that was, um, there's no pain like that of a parent who sees a child sort of going over the edge. Um, and just to say parenthetically, he's over 20 years out of his surgery, and he also has really come through spiritually and do a very, um, he loves the Lord, he preaches the gospel, he's not interim pastor in a church, as well as doing manual work. So God has blessed that, but the suffering of a, of a parent, of a mother, is very difficult. And um, my husband uh, had uh, adult one diabetes and went through all sorts of issues. Your wife was telling me about a time when she found you on the floor um, mm -hmm. with some emergency, and I can't tell you how many times I found my husband on the floor covered in blood because of 
something that had happened. He was Scared on dialysis. Death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he was on dialysis the last six years of his life, and I went home the last three years of his life. I just got off the road to take care of him, which was my joy. I, I loved taking care of him. Um, almost um, 13 years ago now, my, my mother went to heaven. That's maybe one of the hardest deaths I've been through because a mother is somebody very Special. precious and she understood me, she knew me, she, I didn't have to explain things to her, she just got me, you know, and um, so uh, her, her move to heaven was devastating to me. Um, and then it was uh, five years ago, I found my husband unresponsive in our pool and he was rushed to the hospital, put on life support, and three days later we released him and he went to heaven. And two years after that is when my father went to heaven. I was uh, at a friend's house, she was giving me a back massage when I got that phone call. And as soon as I got the phone call, she overheard and she just put her arms around me, prayed for me, and um, then I had to go through all the things that were associated with that. It's very difficult to grieve publicly, you know. And, um, and then six months after that, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and went through surgery, uh, chemotherapy, radiation, um, still checking with the doctor every few months, you know, and have some other issues, but so, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We can talk yes, about some other things uh, spiritually. I've been um, wounded enormously by God's people. The, the wonderful thing is I'm so thankful that I know God well enough, and this is the Holy Spirit in me that reveals, you know, at the end of this passage, it says he's the one that reveals Jesus to us. He reveals the truth to us. And so going through some of those wounds, I knew that God was not like the one that these people were portraying, and that God, God loved me, He was in my corner, He was for me, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit just brought me through some horrific times. So suffering is part of life, but, but the wonderful good news is that we have the Holy Spirit to carry us through all of that. Right, say a word to the people that are watching right now, and they've experienced one or two of the things that you've gone through this whole list, okay? Tell them about the Holy Spirit taking you through each of these things. This is our whole purpose for this program, mm -hmm. is that they would want to experience mm -hmm. and love the Holy Spirit. Yeah. How can they do that? Well, you know, you, you said at the beginning um, that the Holy Spirit is somebody who will change you. And yes. sometimes that's off-putting to us because we think, I'm a pretty good person, I don't think I need to change. But, but I think rather than looking at big character changes, He can take the despair in your life and turn it into hope. And he can take the grief that um, only you know about in the middle of the night when your just heart breaks and the tears wet your pillow. He can turn that into peace and comfort. He can take anger and turn it into love. Um, he, he changes some of those things. So he settles us down on the inside. He makes sense out of the senseless. And when we're confused, he brings clarity. And when we don't know what to do, he gives wisdom. And so the Holy Spirit, you know, Every situation in life is different, but one of the things that we need to learn as Christians is to rely on the Holy Spirit. And we talked about his being a standby, and you referred to a, a car accident that I had. Yeah, now where are we getting these names? We're taking the amplified uh, yes. version, which gives you a definition, and it gives you all of the names that yeah. we're talking about. We're talking about helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, mm -hmm. strengthener, mm -hmm. and standby, which yeah. we haven't covered yet. Yeah. All of these words yeah. come out of one Greek word, which is loaded. You yeah. always see it in John 16, 7. You'll see a footnote next to it. Jesus said, I'm going to send you mm -hmm. another, a comforter or a helper. Mm -hmm. And if you define that word, all of the different meanings, mm -hmm. this is where we're getting yeah. all of these things that the Holy Spirit actually does yeah. in our yeah. life. Yeah. And this is what I don't want the people to miss. Yeah. This is not just for you and me. Yeah. This is for them. Yeah. Right. This is for the average person yeah. all around the world. Maybe they've never even gone to school, yeah. can't sign their name. Yeah. They're just listening right yeah. now. Yeah. The fact is the Holy Spirit of God thinks they're important so much, yeah. He loves them yeah. and He's willing to work with them. Yeah. Now, one of the f words that comes out of the Amplified Version, the definition of helper is the fact is standby. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got a fantastic illustration that's yeah. in your book here you're coming home from your dad's house mm -hmm. and you're going to drive and tell me what happened. 
you know, um, standby. He's he's there for regular use or emergencies. That's and it. so a standby, when you have an emergency, <laughs> you just need him right then. And so I was driving back. We have an interstate. I was going about 70 miles an hour. I was I had both hands on the wheel. Um, I wasn't listening to the radio. I was just thinking back on my visit with my father and uh, went to pass a car. And I went to pass her. And instead of you know, nobody was on the road, just she was there and I was there and I went to pull in around her and suddenly she just made a perpendicular move to the left right straight in front of me. And so going that fast, I slammed on the brakes as hard as I could, but I knew I was going to plow into her and I could just see her head over the door in the window in her car and I just, um, somehow God kept me from hitting her broadside, but I spun around and she spun around and then our cars were like bumper cars, you know, when you <laughs> just crash into each other, the glass, the braking metal, the, when I came out of the spin, um, I found myself going across the interstate straight, headed for an embankment when I knew uh, I would crash down, I don't know how many feet. And, uh, and just at that time, I put on the brakes, this time my brakes pulled the car to a stop and I, I slowed to a stop beside the road and and the most amazing thing was in my ear I heard cheering and high-fiving and and that was tremendous what a great piece of driving you did great and um, there was nobody in my car I had it was below freezing outside there are two um, other vehicles that had stopped to just stick their Facing the door. I couldn't speak to them. They thought I was in shock, but I was listening to what I believe was an angelic chorus of the standby who had sent his angels to guard me in a situation like that. I pulled out of it. My car was not quite totaled, but it was just a mess. Her car was totaled, but both of us walked away from that accident without any damage to ourselves. You know, and so the point I want to make, John, is that. Um, when you have an emergency, you don't have time to prepare for it. Mm -hmm. So there's no time to confess your sin, get right with God, claim Jesus as your Savior, invite the Holy Spirit to come in. All you can do is just say, help me, God, help me. And, and so it's important to establish that personal relationship with God before the emergency rises, because emergencies are emergencies because they're emergencies. You know? mm -hmm. They're crises. We, we can't plan for them or expect them or know when they're coming. They just boom. And all of a sudden, you know, your spouse has walked out. All of a sudden, you've been fired from a job. All of a sudden, your kid is in rebellion. All of a sudden, you're in a car accident. All of a sudden, the doctor says you're dying. You know, it's just all of a sudden like that. And, and at that moment, your emotions, you're almost frozen on the inside. You don't know what to do except say, help me. Yep. And the Holy Spirit is standing by to help you when we call on Him. Yeah. Now, and a lot of people that are listening to us, they've gone to church and they've actually got hurt by other mm -hmm. Christians at church. Okay? And here is the intercessor. The Holy Spirit is an intercessor. Mm -hmm. He pleads our cause and defends us yes. when things happen to us that we didn't even do. Yeah. Okay? You had this happen to you. Well, my husband and I had been in this particular church for 15 years, and I had taught a large women's Bible class in the church. Over for, 500 women yeah, came every week. For, for nine years, including the pastor's wife. I'd say and, that's uh, pretty good. Yeah, it was, you know, the Lord blessed that many lives were changed, including mine, because that's when I got into the scripture, it discovered so many the of these things. Yeah. And, uh, and then they decided that the pastor was retiring and they were going to look for another pastor and um, my husband was on that search committee. They were concerned because they didn't want somebody who, um, believe it or not, um, believed in the inerrancy of the scripture. They wanted somebody who was more, uh, I don't know what you'd call them, liberal, progressive, moderate, um, however those terms are, but somebody who didn't really present the Word of God as the Word of God, which it is, which is, uh, I believe it's an errant, infallible, inspired. And um, so one thing led to another. They removed my class um, and another church of the same denomination opened their doors. And um, so I, I didn't miss a beat, you know, my class went on. But then um, one Sunday morning, uh, when the congregation was present for, for worship service, they had a business meeting and they voted my husband uh, off of the search committee. Um, and when they called the, the vote, the vote was like 600 to 200. And when it was announced, 
the whole sanctuary was filled with applause and just applauding the fact that my husband, who had been chairman of the Board of Deacons, head of the Men's Fellowship, taught the largest Sunday school class in the church, he was now removed from the search committee. And as we walked to the parking lot and I was holding my husband's hand, uh, I just told him, I can't go back, you know. And so he agreed, and, um, but then the newspapers picked it up, you know, so Billy Graham's daughter thrown out of the church. And um, so they had lots of things that were not accurate and in the newspaper. Hurt. Of course, because it's my town where I live. It's yes. my, you know, and so they're saying things that aren't right. But, but I was taught not to defend myself. Let the fruit speak for itself. In my class, there are many changed lives. God had poured out His blessing, so people could just look at the class. But, but during that time, what did God do in your heart? Um, you know, He taught me that I needed to live out my um, my faith. So I had to live out um, forgiveness. I had to live out, uh, I had to release any bitterness, anger, but, but what I want to point out that that newspaper that had me on the front page, somebody thrown out of the church, one year later, they did a profile piece about three pages on me, and it totally vindicated, not, not just me, which I wasn't concerned about so much, but my class and what was being taught. And so the Holy Spirit on you had been my, really my advocate in that case, just pleading my cause and giving me favor in the eyes of the very um, paper that had disparaged me. And the class went on, the class is still going on today. I'm not teaching it every week, but now we have 10 classes. It's Bible Study Fellowship, 10 classes in Raleigh that God has poured out His blessing. And um, so I, I know that the advocate uh, pleaded my cause uh, not in the church, you know, I haven't been back in the church, uh, that particular church. But in the meantime, take one more minute and pray a prayer that folks that are hurt in their own heart, things like this have happened to them, or they've had an emergency that's come on they weren't expecting. Pray for them, maybe a prayer that they could say to the Lord to take the hurt out of their heart, to give them calmness in all of these emergencies that to give them confidence that he's going to be there. Pray a prayer that they could pray to the Lord themselves and see what the Lord does in their life. Yes. Would you do that? I, I would love to do that. And I will say this before I pray, that the key to being released from that hurt and the wound and the bitterness, you have to forgive the wounder. Um, so that's a, a tough call, but let me pray that for you. So Father, we just bow before you now and we think of wounds, oh my goodness, and we see your hands and feet and the brow where the thorns were, and we know you were wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, and it's through your stripes that we're healed. And so you understand what it feels like to be wounded by religious people who call themselves by God's name, but they're not. So Lord, I pray for those who are watching and listening who've been hurt by those who call themselves Christians. They've uh, called themselves by your name, by religious people, maybe some other religion, but they've been deeply wounded. So right now, would you let them know that you understand, that you will heal their broken heart, you will bind up their wounds, but they need to bring them to you. And so Lord, as uh, right now, we just bring our wounds to you, and uh, in our minds, um, I, we, we see the wounder, and the person who has perpetrated such injustice and hurt, and right now we name who they are to you and we choose to forgive them. And not because they deserve it, Lord, so many of them don't at all, but because you for Jesus' sake have forgiven us. And so our forgiveness of others is an act of worship. So we choose to forgive that other person. And Lord, we also would choose to reach out and bless that person and uh, maybe write a note, make a phone call, just do something that would bless that person which would set us free so that we can get on with it. So we thank you that you understand, you hear our prayer. Thank you, dear Holy Spirit, that uh, you're a helper, but you're also a healer and you can heal the wounded heart. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Ann. And folks, thanks for being with us this week and stay tuned, I've got a personal word for you and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what Ann's gonna talk about next week, so stick with us. Stay tuned, John will be right back. Thanks for joining me today. If you would like to have all seven TV programs with Ann Graham Lotz entitled Relying on the Constant Companionship of the Holy Spirit, 
They are available on two DVDs for a gift of $88. In these programs, Anne describes the shock and grief of tragically losing her husband of 49 years. Then just a few years later, her beloved father passed away. Six months later, Anne was diagnosed with breast cancer and she explains how she would have never made it through these circumstances without the constant companionship of the Holy Spirit. Second, we're making available Anne's personal book entitled, Jesus in Me, Experiencing the Holy Spirit as a Constant Companion. If you love books that make you laugh out loud in one chapter and openly cry in the next, Anne does just that by sharing her own family's real life stories with you. She tells about her own love story with the man that she married and then wondered how she would ever raise godly children in our decadent culture. How the Holy Spirit helped her with a daily schedule that never quit and encouraged her when she encountered devastating disappointments. She reveals how she went about calming arguments between her children and sometimes between herself and her husband. How she taught her kids about dating, sex, and purity, and that life is hard and living for Jesus is not easy. Yet the Holy Spirit is our constant companion. If you are facing these same kinds of issues, then you'll love this hardcover edition of Anne's book, and you will hear from God in every chapter. Now, we're making it available to you for a gift of $15. Finally, if you would like to have both her book plus all seven TV programs on DVD, they are available together for a gift of $100. And you may order them now by calling us at 1-800-805-3030. That's 1-800-805-3030 or you may order these items at our website at jashow.org, where we have a secure place for you to give your gift. And if you live in Canada, you may order these items by calling us at 1-866-746-5803. And our Canadian website is jashow.ca. Our goal is to present the evidence for the gospel worldwide and to encourage Christians in their walk with the Lord. This program is sponsored by the John Ankerberg Show Ministries and is made possible by the grace of God and your faithful prayers and gifts.